So here we are at the Diva Mansions. Catherine has just had some mail delivered. Well, it's all this leafleting. I just feel like saying, please put your leaflet into the paper recycling bucket. Or just no, where fuck are you off. going? I don't know. Where, no. are, you, where are you taking so, me? This church is quite an important building, and I'll have to look up why. It's one of only six examples of a certain type of architecture or something. So, where are you taking us? I'm taking us to Teddington Cemetery. That's cheery. <laughs> well, I don't mind cemeteries really. Yeah. I mean, it's going to come to us all, isn't it? Death. I guess it's something we don't really talk about much because we don't really want to talk well, about we it, don't, we don't want to think to, about we it. We don't want it to be true. A quote by Mark Twain, which I can't remember exactly, but the gist of it was, death is the only thing in life that treats us all alike, rich and poor. It reminds us yeah. to be thankful and grateful for things. It shows no matter what your life, it, it just treats us all the same. Yeah, but then I guess when you're younger, you don't really think about it at all, do you? Because well, you just think that you're going to well, live forever. I guess it depends what's happening in your life. People yeah. who probably lost people when they were younger would think about it more. My first real losses were my three of my grandparents died within a year of each other when I was about 13. Those are the first deaths that I remember having an impact on me. Do you think that made you grow up quicker? It made me really appreciate my remaining grandparent, my mother's mother, whose name was Joy, mm. and I made a big effort to really get to know her and spend a lot of time with her. And she actually lived until she was 95 and, and lived to see Zebedee as a baby. Ah, and talking of Zebedee, aren't we just going past Zebedee's school now? And this was their school, this is um, Stanley primary school but this only goes up to age 11. I somewhere. do recognise it. Yeah. You took me here once a couple of years Did ago. I? Yeah. I, well, I, take, I know all the best places. <laughs> you know how to treat oh, me and now we're going to the cemetery you, Phil, today. I'm spoiling you. <laughs> Talking of death you know and how yeah. you think of that as you're growing up and the experiences you have. Has everybody turning 16 has that made you think about your own life as well. I guess it must have done. I know it's not old these days, but I didn't have him until I was 35. And I am actually old enough to be his grandmother. And I think that's quite common these days. A lot of people have they've kind of skipped to generations. I did a lot of work first before I had my family. Not that that's why. I didn't have my family till then because I didn't meet anyone I wanted to have a family with yeah. until I met Max. So it's not so much that, but I suppose it's it's making me think about phases in life. It's like, well, you know, he's going to be going off to college. He's getting more independent. He's wanting to sort of hang out in his room more and a bit less with us and starting to go out with his mates. And it won't be long before Gulliver, who's 13, will be doing the same. So I suppose it just sort of makes you think they are going to go at some point. Yeah. What, does what it make gonna, you feel what quite, we gonna do? quite sad? It does, but friends reassure me that you do feel ready for it when they right. leave. Apparently, you get I mean, used I can't to imagine it. them leaving now. It'd be dreadful. But then they're not ready to leave. But I suppose if they leave because they're going to university or because they're moving in with a friend or whatever, if, as long as you know that they're moving and they're happy to move and they're going to be safe. Do you think they're feeling it? Do you think they know how you feel? No. I think it would be a burden for them. I don't think they, you know, they don't want to say, "Oh my God, when you leave, oh my God, it's going to be awful." You know, you, you can't lay that on them. At the same time, I, I hope they know how much I love them both. Oh, they do. Without a doubt, they do. Well, they'll be able to see it on this video. I love you guys. <laughs> they can't escape no, it. No, that's true. <laughs> God, I've just said everything on film. So here we are in the cemetery. Here we are in the cemetery. We're here already. Which I walk through a lot. I love these three or four. I don't know what they are, but those trees in a row there. Look at all the bluebells. It's funny, isn't it? Because people automatically think of this place as, or any cemetery or graveyard as somewhere that's very depressing. No, but you're wrong. Can... You think of it as somewhere depressing. Because I don't think of it as graveyards as I think as a lot depressing. of people do though. But I think it's a place of tranquility, isn't it? Yes, it's a place it is. Of rest. It's peaceful. Yeah. And it's a place of reflection and it's a place that does force you to think about your mortality and I think that's worth doing because you need to stop and take stock and think well am I doing what I really want to be doing am I living the best life I can you crikey who knew that the PMK podcast would be so poignant and so, <laughs> so heartfelt Get yeah I've I've always liked maybe I'm odd I don't know I've just always liked <clears throat> graveyards but this graveyard goes back the graves date back to 18 something 
There's one further down the road that goes back to 16. So there's some quite old graves and I love looking at the names. There's one over there. Um, there's a, a man, I forget his name, Henry, I think, Henry Branch. Yeah. And he married his wife, who's also buried with him, who then became Olive Branch. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but look at these. I mean, when I go abroad, if like when I've been to, to Russia, I've sometimes said, can you take me to a cemetery? And they look at me as if I'm bonkers. Yeah. But then they, whoever it is, invariably gets really interested because it is fascinating. There's a lot of art in here too, you know, in the in the headstones and the angels and the graves and and just seeing the different periods of history, like the the ones that were around the war and the 1930s ones with the hairstyles of the angels are very Art Deco and. I remember being at, at art that school, lovely one. doing a photography course as part of my art studies, and I used to take a lot of photos in the cemeteries. But then I was a sad old goth at that point, <laughs> so that probably <laughs> explains why. Obsessed by death, and you know the, the look of death. The look. The look of death. Of death. New ABC single.